This is Matt from White Moon Dreams, and welcome to War Machine Tactics. Today we'll be giving you a quick tour of the game and preparing you for your first battle. Whether you're new to turn-based strategy or a veteran of the infamous War Machine Tabletop by Privateer Press, this video should help get you into combat quickly. Alright, so let's go ahead and fire up the game. You can currently play through a 21 mission single player campaign following the ascent of journeyman warcaster Allison Jakes. Practice and test loadouts in skirmish mode or take on other players head to head in online multiplayer. Today we'll mostly be focusing on useful skills for multiplayer and skirmish. But before we dive in and start smashing things, let's get familiar with the world of War Machine. Welcome to the Iron Kingdoms, a land rich in history and conflict, steam power and gunpowder, and home to the six playable factions of War Machine tactics, Signar, Kador, Crix, the Protectorate of Menoth, Mercenaries, and Retribution of Syra. Signar, Strife and Turmoil, Blood and Sweat, Smoke and Brilliant Blue Electricity. Signar is unequaled in the synthesis of magic and science, boasting advanced mechanica and excelling at long range. Kador, their massive armies personify their ideals, strength and resilience over all else. They boast the strongest and most fearsome flesh and steel has to offer. Crix, who exist solely to devour any and all things at the behest of the Dragon Father. Their martial strengths are speed, surprise, denial, and all the power undeath brings them. Protectorate of Menoth, armed with the righteousness of their god Menoth and striking down the unfaithful with his holy cleansing fire. Mercenaries, war is their business. Fighters for hire, they hold no allegiance to their respective homelands. Their warjacks are as ragtag as the warriors themselves. Retribution of Syra, once an outlawed fringe organization of zealous and violent elven fanatics, with considerable power over Arcanica at their disposal. Now they seek vengeance upon those they hold responsible for their ills. Now that you know a little more about the factions, let's pick one and build our squad. Let's go ahead and enter the squad construction menu to begin. So your squad is comprised of three types of units, warcasters, warjacks, and warriors. Each unit has a point cost associated with it. Create your custom squad by mixing and matching units up to 50 points total. You can find more information on any unit by referring to its unit card. So your warcasters are the most unique, important, and strongest of units in the game. Consider them your squad's leader. They control and power your warjacks, cast powerful spells, and once a game can cast a signature feat that can change the tide of the battle. As long as your Warcaster is alive, there's always hope. If your Warcaster is killed, however, game over. Next we have Warjacks. These hulking constructs of iron and steel are brought to life through a fusion of steam power and magic. They're controlled telepathically by their Warcaster. Jacks are capable of inflicting and absorbing the most damage on the field and are most effective when allocated focus by their Warcaster. Okay, so that brings us to your Warriors. Your warriors typically operate as a sort of infantry, and although they may not be the strongest units, they can create a number of effective tactics on the field, especially when working in combination with each other. Alright, so now that we've got our factions selected and have our squad set up, let's take a quick look at how a typical match plays out. At the beginning of each game, before your first turn, is the deployment phase. The deployment phase is your opportunity to strategically place your units in the position you'd like them to advance from. During this phase, your opponent can't see what you're doing, and you can't see what they're up to. Just make sure to consider your squad loadout, game plan, and terrain when deciding how you'd like to deploy. It's totally up to you and your battle plan. So now that we've set up our deployment, let's begin our turn. Before we move our units out into battle, we'll spend some time in the control phase. During this period, we can allocate focus to our warjacks and warcasters. Focus can also be used to upkeep existing spells or shake effects such as knockdown. Since this is our first round and we haven't cast any spells, let's go ahead and apply some focus to our Warjacks and leave some for our Warcaster. This is called the Activation Phase. This is when all your planning in the Deployment and Control Phases pays off and we move into combat. So let's go ahead and select the unit and see what we can do. Hey, what are these red, yellow, and blue lines? Great question, I'm glad you asked. So let's go over the meaning of the yellow, red, and blue lines you see here. War Machine Tactics operates on a grid system, meaning that depending on the speed of your unit, they'll be able to move so many grid squares in a turn. Quick pro tip, you can press G 
on your keyboard to toggle the grid view on and off. So let's start with the yellow line. This is your Warcaster's range of control or influence. Anything within the yellow line can be impacted by spells, feats, and focus. For example, you will not be able to allocate focus to Warjacks that are positioned outside of this line or affect enemy units with your feet if they aren't in the zone. Alright, so moving on, we're going to take a look at the red and blue lines together. So the red line indicates the furthest possible distance your unit can advance this turn. You may be tempted to advance as far as you can, but let's not do that just yet. At least not until you understand what the blue line means. So the blue line indicates how far your unit can advance and also be able to attack. Anything within the blue line allows you to move and take another action, such as an attack. And anything between the blue and red line will count as your full turn and will immediately end your activation. Generally, it comes down to whether you want your unit to be effective this turn or next turn. If they are out of range of their enemies, you might want to run them the full distance. Otherwise, you might want to make a half movement so you can perform an attack or buff. There are two basic types of attack, ranged and melee. Melee requires you to get within physical striking distance of your enemy. Ranged attacks can be launched from several squares away. So let's go ahead and make a melee attack. All right, now let's go ahead and make a ranged attack. Now that we have units engaged in combat, there's one more thing you need to know. If you try to run away from or past an enemy that's within striking distance of you, bad things can happen. They will automatically take a shot at you called a free strike. To avoid giving enemies this opportunity, try to run around them or kill them, but it's best to avoid making moves when the free strike icon appears. Also, you should know that some units are capable of other types of attacks and abilities. For example, Warjacks have the ability to perform power attacks, which require focus to execute. Attacks like push, trample, throw, and headbutt allow you to control your opponent's position and effectiveness on the field. Alright, so now that we've gotten used to the basics of combat, let's talk Warcasters and focus. So each Warcaster has focus points that they can either use to enhance their Warjack's power and effectiveness, or they can keep their focus points to themselves and cast spells and increase their armor. Each caster has unique spells, abilities, and feats, which are powerful both offensively and defensively. Each round you will have the opportunity to reallocate focus, so just keep in mind what you'd like to do that round and allocate focus accordingly. So now that we know how to fight, how do we win? So in skirmish mode it's simple. Kill the enemy warcaster and victory is yours. In a regular multiplayer match you can win by killing their caster, but you can also win by holding control of specific zones on the map and racking up control points. First player to 5 points wins the game, even if the Warcasters both survive. This primer should get you started, but we always encourage you to experiment with various units, factions, and Warcasters to find out what style works best for you. We're fortunate to have a very knowledgeable and friendly community, and we'd love to have you join us in our forums or social media channels if you have any questions or could use some help from the pros. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at White Moon Dreams or visit us on our forums at forums.whitemoondreams.com. So thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your support and have fun playing War Machine Tactics.